Your world, your challenges, your faith. When faith within engages the world without, there's power. It's living life from the inside out. Loneliness is absolutely one of the results of the coronavirus. We withdrew into our homes last spring as a protection against the pandemic, and even introverts like me felt the loneliness of that kind of isolation. That feeling was magnified for people who already felt separated from others because of grief, age, or disability. I'm Martha Manikas Foster, and here on Inside Out, we'll be talking about how God's church intersects with our loneliness. My guest is Clarissa Mall. She's been a fundraiser, storyteller, wife, and homeschooling mother of four. With her husband Rob's sudden death a year ago, she also became a widow. Clarissa shares her discoveries of grace through grief as a speaker, blogger, and writer. It's good to have you with us, Clarissa. Thank you so much for having me, Martha. I am sorry for your loss. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, you were just adjusting to life without Rob when, was it eight months later, that everything changed again? Stores and churches closed and were all told to stay home. And I'm wondering if you can describe for us what the impact of pandemic isolation was on a family that was already grieving. That's right. We were not even a year in to uh, the year after Rob's death when the pandemic began and quarantine set in. You know, grief is a very lonely experience. It's hard for people to understand who haven't endured it themselves. And the pandemic really cut us off from the physical support systems that we had enjoyed. We no longer got to go to church. Our kids didn't go to school anymore. And so all of those physical support systems were suddenly gone. In addition, I think that the pandemic also increased the anxiety that we had around sure, loss. Sure. We started to hear stories about people dying. And we had just endured a sudden, unexpected, tragic loss. And to hear these stories again, it made you feel like, could this happen to me? Could this happen again? Mm. And so I think uh, the anxiety that was a part of that those first few months of pandemic really made our grief uh, more difficult to bear. Oh, that, that must have been difficult. That must have been difficult. Now, at the beginning, everybody was scrambling. So perhaps the church, you know, didn't quite step up in, in the very beginning. I don't know if that's the case. But, but what were the best things that the church or individual Christians did to try and make your isolation and your family's isolation less lonely? The way I like to describe the response of the church, both to grief and also in the pandemic, was that we fumbled toward love. I think that's how it really worked. Nobody knows really what to do or what to say when uh, someone loses a loved one. And gosh, nobody knew what to say when a pandemic hit either. But people kept showing up. I had a friend from church who committed to texting me weekly to check in and make sure I was okay, even though we couldn't meet face to face anymore. Folks from church continued to bring us meals, even though we couldn't go out to the grocery store, we couldn't order from restaurants, and they couldn't even stand on the front step to talk to us Mm. when they dropped them off. Mm. So people got creative. Mm. And um, even though it was challenging, even though grief in pandemic was really lonely, people kept showing up and offering us the gift of their presence. And were they asking you? Because I'm told that in grief, you're not supposed to ask the grieving person, what should I do? Because it puts too much of the onus on the grieving person. Were people just going out of their gut on what they thought might help? Or were they asking you, what is it that you need? I think it was both. I think people who knew me well could ask what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. And I felt comfortable telling them what I needed. Mm -hmm. And people who I didn't know well just did what they thought they could do. Uh, Send a card that was unexpected or send a text, send a letter, an email, those kinds of things. So I think it's kind of like a, a circle of intimacy. The people who were really close, they just intuitively knew what to do, what to ask. And people who were more of acquaintances or people who just cared in our community, they reached out in the very best ways that they could, offering meals and other kinds of support. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me take a moment here and just reset. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Inside Out podcast on family life. I'm talking today with writer Clarissa Mall. Clarissa, Scripture shows us, well, among many other things, how an ideal church works, how God's people can work together as a body 
guided by God's Holy Spirit. What are helpful ways Christians could begin now, today, to care for and support people who are grieving, isolated, or lonely? You know, my husband, Rob, wrote a book called The Art of Dying. Mm -hmm. And in it, he talked about the ways that the church could come around people who were caregiving for dying people and come around to care for the dying. And as he did his research, as he worked in hospice and in a funeral home, he discovered that there was a single thing that dying people needed most. They needed presence, Mm -hmm. the gift of presence. And I think that that's exactly true for grieving and isolated and lonely people too. They need to know they're not alone. You know, we know through scripture that God never leaves us alone, Mm -hmm. but God is unseen. And in grief and loneliness, it can be really hard to know that he's present. And if the church is the hands and feet of Jesus in the world, it's our job to make material, to incarnate that God who is unseen to the people who are suffering. And I think that's the the great joy and honor of the church, Mm. to be the hands and feet of Jesus to people who are grieving and isolated and lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. What encouragement would you offer to people who are listening and feel alone right now? Well, after Rob died, I decided to wear black for three months. I just needed that physical Mm. kind of manifestation that I felt different on the inside and I needed to somehow say it on the outside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've often thought that as we sit in our sanctuaries, if everybody we knew in that sanctuary wore black to represent the burden of grief that they carry. Maybe it's a job loss Mm -hmm. or a relationship that's strained, a child who's wayward. I really think that most of the people in the sanctuary would be wearing black. And I think the thing that people who feel alone um, need most is the encouragement of those among them who say, hey, you're not as alone as you think you are. I'm carrying a different burden. Uh, but I'll walk with you. Mm -hmm. And that presence on the road of suffering is the gift that uh, people who feel alone need most. They know that God is with them, but they also need to know that people are with them too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Part of the difficulty I'm finding is the practical because I know that the people in my life who feel lonely right now are people who would really like the hug, you know, and the touch The pandemic is vicious and unkind in many ways, but one of those is the way that it keeps us apart. So a lot of creativity, do what you can, ask if you don't know, and show that that you care by the way that you act and communicate. It seems not nearly as lyrical as how you said it, but yes. (laughs) Okay. All right. All right. That's right. Keep showing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Keep showing up and... uh, You're right that physical touch is a hard piece of that, but um, we keep doing the other things we can do until we can hug each other again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very, very well said. Well, thank you, Clarissa. Thank you for your writing as you reach out to others and for joining me here today on Inside Out. Thank you so much, Martha. My guest has been writer Clarissa Mall. You'll find links to her website where you find Inside Out podcasts at fln.org slash inside out. I'm Martha Manikas-Foster with Inside Out on Family Life.